Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is seasonal affective disorder? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss anything new. Now we talk about seasonal affective disorder. We're actually talking about something that's not technically a standalone mental health disorder, which may seem a bit unusual to say considering the title of this video is, what is seasonal affective disorder? But it's actually a specifier of other disorders. The specifier is with seasonal pattern. And this specifier is available to disorders like major depressive disorder, bipolar 1 disorder, and bipolar 2 disorder. We usually think of it as most associated with major depressive disorder, but it may occur at about the same rate in individuals with bipolar disorder. We really don't know. We do know that with major depressive disorder, it occurs about 10 to 20 percent of the time. So it's a specifier that wouldn't be unusual to see about 10 to 20% of the time when you see a presentation of major depressive disorder. So for an individual to be eligible for a diagnosis that includes the specifier, they would have to meet the full criteria for major depressive disorder or bipolar disorder. Now the criteria for major depressive disorder, for example, includes items like feeling hopeless, sad, or empty, having decreased pleasure, excessive guilt, difficulty concentrating. So symptoms like that would be present and the diagnosis for major depressive disorder, MDD, would be given. And then the diagnostic criteria for with seasonal pattern would be considered. So specifically referring to MDD here, the symptoms of a seasonal pattern specifier include a temporal relationship between major depressive episodes and a particular time of the year. We usually think of the time of the year being referred to here as fall or winter, but can also be spring or summer. This first criterion would not be met if there's a better explanation for the temporal relationship. For example, if an individual has a job where they're typically unemployed for a period of time in the winter, that might be a better explanation than the seasonal pattern. The second symptom criterion is that full remissions occur at a particular time of the year. And usually this would be, for example, with the fall winter seasonal pattern, this would be in the spring or summer. So we would see major depressive episodes in the fall or winter, and we would not see major depressive episodes in the spring or summer. The third criterion with seasonal pattern would be in the last two years, there have been two major depressive episodes at least that follow this temporal pattern and no non-seasonal major depressive episodes. So if an individual had a major depressive episode in the winter, for example, and then again the summer, they would not meet this criterion. The fourth criterion is that the seasonal major depressive episodes substantially outnumber non-seasonal major depressive episodes over the course of the individual's lifetime. Now those are the symptom criteria for with seasonal pattern related to major depressive disorder and really the symptom criteria for seasonal pattern with bipolar disorder is very close to the same except it can also be a manic or hypomanic episode. So somebody could have, for example, a hypomanic episode in the winter and we would not expect to see one in the spring or summer. Now with major depressive disorder with seasonal pattern, we usually see symptoms of major depressive disorder that may be in one direction or the other. So for example, with seasonal pattern, we usually see low levels of energy, overeating, weight gain, hypersomnia, that's getting more sleep than usual, and a craving for carbohydrates. With the spring and summer seasonal pattern, we would more likely see a decrease in appetite, weight loss, anxiety, and insomnia, so not getting enough sleep. We know the prevalence of seasonal pattern with major depressive disorder tends to increase as individuals are farther away from the equator. So if someone lives, for example, in Maine, Vermont, or New Hampshire in the United States, they would be at a greater risk for major depressive disorder with seasonal pattern than someone who lives in Florida or Texas. Also, another risk factor is age, with individuals who are younger having a higher risk of seasonal pattern than individuals who are older. Now, how about treatments for MDD with seasonal pattern? Well, there are a number of treatments. 
Some of those popular include light therapy and medication. But another therapy which has had fairly good success is a version of cognitive behavioral therapy that's based on Aaron Beck's cognitive therapy. So there are a few different treatment options for MDD with seasonal pattern, and oftentimes we think of these treatment options as fairly effective. I hope you found this description of seasonal affective disorder or major depressive disorder with seasonal pattern to be interesting. Thanks for watching.